Hey kids, this is Dresser James. And on this Dresser James Explains, we go over the Jungasaurus. So first and foremost, I want to point out why the globe here. Because I had a class recently and I asked the kids who likes geography and all the hands. Well, no, actually three hands went up out of like 30 kids. And I said, who wants to travel? And then like 15 hands go up. And I was like, how can you travel if you don't know where you're going? You need to know geography. So first and foremost, what makes Majungasaurus so popular is that it's from Africa, not just any part of Africa, but particularly Madagascar. So it's one of the few dinosaurs known from Madagascar. So that's worth noting. It likes to move and move it. I know it's a very bad joke. I'm sorry. You deserve better. But um, I was told by the people who love me, my friends and family, that uh, you're supposed to open the toy on. I actually bought this, I want to say eight months ago. I've been waiting for this video. So I'm going to open it with you now because it's apparently a thing. So uh, let's see. So, the Jungasaurus, the Jurassic World of the Jungasaurus. First one, I want to point out, really cool model that this guy has. Uh, I like this, this like, this, there's a reason why. This sausage shaped body is really cool. The overall design, it's very different, and I like that Jurassic World, or Mattel, or, or, is doing what they're doing. It's really kind of cool to have all these different species coming out, and yeah, they're not super accurate sometimes, but that's still, a, you know, a Majungasaurus on like shelves. That's really cool to me. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, where did I first meet Majungasaurus? It was with this guy here. I thought it was, a, I believe, a Collect A figure, and this one is more scientifically accurate, but you're seeing they're very similar. So I'll tell you the story real quick. Very simply put, in 1890, I want to say seven, no, five, uh, a, team went, a French team went to, actually, the French military went to Madagascar to take control of the island from the British. Well, they brought scientists with them, and they found these bones and teeth. Well, they weren't sure what they were, so the description was Megalosaurus, because every dinosaur we're not sure of is Megalosaurus, it's a predator dinosaur. Uh, years later, they looked at it again, and actually in the 90s, uh, other teams have gone out and dug and found. They found so many skeletons, or sorry, so many bones, they had enough to put together a skeleton. They were all individuals, uh, uh, you know, scattered out. But they found enough of their bones, and they're like, let's put it, in. they found, like, the, you know, the guy. So, uh, I first met Majungasaurus when I saw this toy online. It was the first one ever of this type, and I was super excited, and I bought it. Uh, Majungasaurus is considered to be the, quote, ugliest dinosaur, because when you see the reconstructions, uh, well, they have, like, all these, I love the noise. They have all these bumps and things in their face, and they have a horn in the middle of their head. So... We've seen dinosaurs, uh, predator dinosaurs with like two horns or crests. This guy has like a, just a horn there. And, when it, and it was first looked at, there was a dome on the on the skull. So the assumption was uh, it was a Pachycephalosaurus after that. Like, well, it was not a Negosaurus, it's a Pachycephalosaurus. Or at least the parts, the dome they found. And these, of course, are homogenous cephala. These are, uh, you know, herbivores. They are, and they're not found in the Southern Hemisphere. So that was a big deal at the time. But the idea is that uh, if they found more of the skeletons and they put them together, they say, oh, this is, all, this is a really unusual predator and it's not a megalosaurus that's the main thing and it's classified as a bellosaurus you know like what's in a bellosaurus well simply put uh you may have already my newest dinosaur actually is this guy here it's a carnotaurus you saw carnotaurus in dc's dinosaur and of course this is the one from jurassic world that the t-rex uh rex he kept getting in fights with the bellosaurus are i call them the bulldogs of the cretaceous and not, the reason why is that um throughout the cretaceous the allosaur type of predators were dying out and in the Northern Hemisphere, you have Tyrannosaurus getting bigger and taking over. And, you know, uh, particularly in Asia and North America, it's like a whole, one species, I think, in, in England. But overall, Northern Hemisphere are Tyrannosaurus. In South America, and, and uh, you know, the Southern Hemisphere, we have Carnotaurus in South America, Majungasaurus in um, Madagascar. There are relatives, of course, in actual Africa proper. We have Rugops, uh, yeah. this guy here living with Spinosaurus. And then we have Rajasaurus in India. And you're saying, how could it, how is that possible? Well, before, after Pangaea, the supercontinent, when they were all one continent, after they broke apart, it broke north and south. So the northern part had North America, Europe, and Asia. It was called Laurasia. The southern part was called Gondwanaland. And that was Africa, South America, India, Australia, Antarctica, and obviously uh, uh, Madagascar. So the idea is that we have, so that's why Rajasaurus being from India, which she has triple standing, and Majungasaurus from Madagascar, like that's why. I'm not surprised that you have the same kind of animal in those different areas, even though they're separated by oceans now. Uh, at the time, that was once together. They lived, died, fossilized, and broke apart. But I will mention to you that Madagascar has been an island in at least 88 million years. So it was already on an island when this guy came along. 
but these were Abelosaurs in general, and where Tyrannosaurs ruled the north, the Abelosaurs ruled the south. They weren't as big as Tyrannosaurs, but they all had these like shorter truncated crushing bites. In fact, the one thing I like about, well, I like about this animal, but I don't like about this animal, is that the skull is very blunt, but it's actually not blunt enough. Like, even a Carnotaurus skull is not quite as short as it should be, and it should be rounder. The, the head should be more wide. Uh, and, you know, giving credence to that ugly as dinosaur uh, uh, argument. I will tell you this. I know that there's a, it's called Dinos Jurassic Fight Club, and they mentioned that Magenosaurus, uh, because it was an island, there may have been inbreeding and incest, which is why it grew these weird features. I don't, when I tell people, when they watch like these documentary-like things or animations with scientists, um, I can watch it and I know enough to say, oh, that person's saying an actual find, that person's just speculating, like there's a line. There are certain things that aren't always clear. So, so for example, they ended up being a cannibal. They have found bite marks on Majungasaurus skeletons and they match, well, at least the only large predator is Majungasaurus itself. Uh, the name Majungatholus was the, uh, one of the earlier names for the animal, but they now think that's actually part of the same genus or its junior part. The problem, of course, is the first one they called Majungatholus was so fragmented, they can't compare it enough to see if it's also actually Majungasaurus. So it's technically in the books, it's like, oh, so good, you know, uh, irrelative. But in general, it's the only large predators are these things. So if you have a big bite mark on it, it's probably one of these things. <laughs> that's the argument. So, uh, but again, the cannibal idea is there. That's something that's speculative. We have, you know, some evidence here and there. But the idea of them being inbreeding, that's not supported much. That's just something we see in certain environments. But, you know, that being said, speaking of feeding and, and, and eating, uh, what did he eat? Unfortunately, um, Bajungasaurus is the only Madagascar dinosaur they make. They, we do know there are two titanosaurs in the environment and a raptor-like animal. And I will represent those with other uh, related species. So, for example, Titanosaurus, this is Malawisaurus, which is a Titanosaur from uh, the Africa mainland. Uh, it's, it, essentially, it's, it would, not the scale, but Titanosaurus are really cool because in the Jurassic period, we have Brachiosaurus type and Diplodocus type. You know, again, Brachiosaurus have long arms, short legs, boxy heads. Diplodocus have short arms, long legs, horse like heads, and they're two different branches of long neck sauropods. Well, the. Brachiosaurus group are called Macronaria, and those go in, and, and not so much that Brachiosaurus became a Titanosaurus, but that lineage led to Titanosaurus, which uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, there are still some in Europe and Asia, but the Titanosaurus really blossom in South America, you know, they're really in the Southern Hemisphere, Africa, you know, so we see a lot of them there, more, more of them there, and the idea is that uh, when looking at this animal, what I like about the actual design is that the head, you see it's like a sausage, it's like a really long head, um, they found enough of the skulls to do scans and comparison, and the, the frocula part of the brain helps with balance is not as large. So the animal isn't, you know how the raptors can like cock their heads and do all the algae birds? Their brains don't show they can do that. So the idea is that the skull is actually a long, and, and the inner ear working um, suggests that the head was not like a nice shaped neck. It was just kind of held out flat. And they have really tiny, tiny arms. I mean, in fact, um, they have four fingers, and... This one has three. I just realized that. But, but the idea is that uh, the way their skulls would have been held, the way they're very blunt, they have tiny arms and they're very stocky legs. These guys aren't like fast predators. Like the Carnotaurus has long legs. You know, people are like, what's well, one of the fastest dinosaurs? Well, the fastest are, or the ostrich dinosaurs. But this guy has like longer legs and the tarsal look. It can run. And, you know, this guy is not that design. It's very blunt. So it's designed, we think, to eat sauropods that you can walk up to it and bite onto it and hold onto it. Um, instead of, uh, you know, that the raptors are ripping and tearing, these guys would just grab on and kind of hold it and try to pull it down, you know. So, um, I like that action there, that, you know. So, so the idea here is that that's its honey style, because the only other animals are on, on the island we know of in that time, Lake Cretaceous, because this is Lake Cretaceous, are there's two, two sauropod species and a raptor. Now, this model is a velociraptor, but the one they have there, they don't make that model, at least to date. Um, and I remember when I, I was a kid in the 90s, and they thought it was a bird, just a straight up avian bird. Um, and I remember looking in the 2000s when the paper came out, I said, actually, look at it, it's actually a dromaeosaurus or raptor. So in Madagascar, we have two titanosaurus species, a raptor, uh, of course, Majinosaurus itself, and a some kind, of, kind of crocodile relative. Again, the environment would have had more animals than that, but that's what preserved millions of years from then. So that's Majinosaurus in general. But the idea is that it's, it's not so much its environment, but who it's related to, because in studying dinosaur family trees, it's we can see what 
the different branches. So the abelosaurus are this whole group of these blunt nosed, tiny, tiny arms. In fact, their arms are shorter than Tyrannosaurus arms by comparison. Um, and, and people say T Rex arms are vestigial. They still have some strength, some mobility. These guys' arms, you see, look at the, the, the really good toys. Their arms kind of just sit on the side like that. They're, they're really reduced. And they have, you know, reduction of, of fingers and, and mobility. Like the fingers on Majinosaurus are very, very stout. They don't seem to have any kind of articulation. They, they can't move. Um, so, like, these guys are really losing their arms, like, you know, really fast. So the idea is that within Dinosauria, we find different branches. And then we find that within, like, Thoropods, there's the Abelosaurus, who we think actually evolved from Cerat... Well, in the Jurassic period, we have Ceratosaurus like this. So Ceratosaurus lived in a morse formation with Allosaurus and Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus. So it has these horns. And then the Ceratosaurus kind of, like, die out. And then we see a Bellosaurus showing up. So it's like, well, that's close enough, you know. But they're also very blunt, uh, short, short, not as short, but shorter noses. Um, so anyway, but the idea is that we're seeing within Dinosauria, there's these different branches and sub-branches. And then within that, there's diversity. So the Carnotaurus is this kind of slender, faster-moving animal. The 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 Magenosaurus is, you know, shorter, blunted. There's still a Bellosaurus, still the same group, family grouping, but there's different versions of that. And my only example to you would be like, you know, a wolf versus a coyote versus a dog, you know. They're all in the same grouping, but they're still separate species. Like, or in, in a sense. Uh, of course, those are breeds, but anyway. So, that is Magenosaurus. I opened it for you because that's a thing people like on the internet. If there's any questions... I don't think I like the way I was talking about it. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, or ideas, uh, requests, please comment below. Subscribe if you think this is cool.